Howdy folks, Jake here with Banjo Ben, and today we got a fun little project. Uh, this is something I always like doing because it really improves the looks of your instrument. And as we all know, a, a good instrument's all about looks. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. So we're going to talk about changing a pick guard on a guitar. And uh, a lot of people get nervous about this, but it's a fairly simple process as long as you're careful. Take your time. So I'm going to walk you through the steps here. This is my buddy Adam. Uh, it's his uh, guitar. He's actually uh, working here at the store now. Great banjo player. But this is his uh, Eastman guitar, which is a great guitar. And uh, we got in these new Torto Guard pit guards. And so, as you can see, we got all kinds of them here. We got the Tony Rice Tortoise, the non Tony Rice Tortoise, the 50s style, the dark tortoise, the 30s style, kind of the reddish tortoise. And that's kind of what he thought he'd like to have on here is uh, make it look like an old pre-war Martin herringbone, except brand new. So <laughs> uh, we're gonna put this on here. Now, the first thing that you always wanna do with any pick guard, before you take the old one off, which I'll show you how to do here in just a second, we wanna take the new one and, and carefully line it up over the old one where it matches the, you know, the, the uh, radius of the, uh, the rosette and everything like that. And we just wanna look it over and make sure it covers the footprint of the old one adequately. And I've already looked over this one very closely and it does. Most of the aftermarket ones you find are gonna be just slightly oversized uh, to cover the old footprint. Um, it's not as much of an issue on new guitars because whenever we pull this off, chances are the color will be pretty close under the pit guard as it is on top. But what can happen on older guitars is you can have you know, that wood and the finish can darken up a lot. And then when you peel the old pit guard off, it looks brand new underneath the pit guard. So you want to make sure that your footprint is going to be covered with the new pit guard. So all we're going to need for this, um, I'm just going to show you how to do it with just common items you'd probably have around the house. Uh, we're just going to need, you know, a polishing cloth of some sort, maybe a number two pencil. Uh, this is a mechanical pencil, some guitar polish and some limb oil. That'll help get the old gunk off out from under the, uh, the old pit guard were taken off. And I like to use a hair dryer. This is a official Banjo Ben Clark.com brand hair dryer in hot pink. That was a limited edition. So you can't find that in stores anymore. And, uh, my dad, he actually, uh, at the last store I worked at, we put a video out on how to do this. And he, he liked using an iron, like a clothes iron. And he, he had these blocks of wood. He, his theory was with the iron, uh, as long as you kind of set up a guard system where you didn't get it too close, you could direct the heat better. Um, and that works really well. Uh, I figured I would show you the hairdryer method because that's what most people use. That's going to be um, what most of you will find in your house, have the most readily available. You know, there ain't probably ain't a whole lot of people ironing their clothes these days. So anyway, stay tuned. Uh, we'll get set up for the, the first step, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, folks. So step one is removal of the old pit guard. Um, what we're going to do here, with the hair dryer, it's going to get noisy, and I probably won't be able to do much talking in between. So I might have to kind of uh, explain what I'm going to do, and then at the end kind of explain what I did do along the way. But what we do is we take our hair dryer, and uh, you don't get it too close. You just kind of keep feeling the top with your hand. And we want to keep the heat, we want to keep it moving. We don't want to stay in one place too long. We're trying to heat up the uh, pit guard. And the idea there is we get it warm enough that glue joint between the pit guard and the top of the guitar will turn loose. And we can get our fingernail under it and peel it back. Once we get our fingernail under it and start peeling it back, uh, we kind of just keep heating the joint. You'll see as we pull up on it where it'll be still hanging on as it comes across the guitar, you'll see the joint where it's still bonded. And you just kind of keep heating that joint. And all the while, this is the most critical, we don't want to get that finish too hot. You can tell with your hand if it's getting too hot or not. Um, I mean, it, you have, with a hairdryer, you'd have to get it, you'd have to really neglect uh, paying attention in order to get it so hot that you'd bubble the finish, but it can happen. So it's something you just want to be conscious of. Um, so we're going to get our, get our heat going here.
might style this guitar's hair while we're at it. And you can tell when it starts getting pretty warm to the touch, when it starts getting pretty warm to the touch, we want to go ahead and try to lift that first, that front corner up. You see, we got it up fairly easily. It's going to leave a lot of residue, that's normal. Okay, so we got the old pit guard off. Um, as you can see, uh, a lot of this, that's not nothing wrong with your finish or anything. That's just, that's just sticker residue, that double-sided tape. You can see it's kind of coming off. And now we just work this stuff off of here. Um, if you don't have uh, any like penetrating oil, like lemon oil works really good for this uh, to, to loosen up the, the gunk and rub it off. You can, just with your thumb like I'm doing, it'd take a while, but you can just take your thumb and work across this, and you can even keep heating it up if you want. Like I said, this is just, uh, as my dad used to say, poor men have poor ways. And so, <laughs> if, if that's the case, if you just don't have anything else handy, um, you, can, you can just rub it all off with your thumb. It takes a little while. But if you do have lemon oil handy. What I'll do is uh, give it a few squirts of that. Get to where it's looking like it's soaking in good. And then I'll just let it sit for a while. So uh, we'll probably pause here and come back after it's had a chance to sit for a while and then uh, show you what it looks like all cleaned up. Okay, so here's a little progress report as we're going along here. I've let this lemon oil kind of soak in, scrub the top layer off. It's still soaking in. Um, it's kind of come to a point. Sometimes with this stuff, it just takes uh, a little working. It's kind of come to a point where I'm finding I'm making about as much headway after I got that lemon oil on there. Just using my thumb, not my thumbnail, just the fleshy part of my thumb. And you can see I'm pushing that and it's coming off cleanly across the top. So you can see about how long it's gonna take. It's not that it's gonna take a great deal of time, but it's gonna take a little bit. Um, so I'll continue to do that until the top's clean. And then uh, we'll come back and explain to you how to install your new fancy pick guard. Okay, folks, so we have a blank canvas here. Uh, probably the most time consuming part of this whole ordeal is getting the uh, residue off. Uh, the way my dad used to do it uh, with the, uh, the uh, clothes iron is uh, he, uh, he had it figured out where he could get it a certain temperature where most of that uh, residue would stay stuck to the pit guard and wouldn't be on the guitar. Uh, that's not typically always going to happen. More often than not, you're going to have some to clean up. So um, after we got everything off, we, you know, oiled it up good with that limb oil and just went across scrubbing it like this. Um, after I got everything off, you can tell you want it, whenever you go across this with a cloth, you want it to feel the same everywhere where there wasn't a pit guard and where there used to be. Uh, in other words, if it sticks and grabs, you know you still got some stuff there. So we want to get that really clean. After we get that clean, I just take some regular polish. Uh, this is Dunlop Formula 65. I like it, it, it cuts 
a lot of the gunk off and it doesn't leave any residue. Uh, after I work the polish in, then I'll go over and, and really wipe it down with a dry, a clean, dry cloth like this. And then that kind of gets us, gets us ready. We want that to be a good, clean surface. So we're going to take the pit guard. Now, a, a little trick with a lot of these, um, especially these handmade types, the, the radius here isn't always going to be the same as what most of your sound holes are going to be. Sometimes uh, the way the radius is cut, it'll look really good uh, matching it up against this very outer edge of the thickest rosette ring. Uh, sometimes it'll look better setting it in just a little bit to one of the, the inner rings. It'll just match up better. Sometimes you might want to cover that big ring completely up. Uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with any of that. It's just personal preference and uh, what you like. So all that's left to do is to stick the new pit guard on here. There's several ways to do this. Um, I take kind of a primitive approach and I'll explain that to you. What some people like to do is they'll set it and get it just right where they want it. And then they'll take um, some masking tape and they'll put several strips of masking tape into the sound hole right here over the pit guard. And they'll, they'll you know, get it all dialed in where it's just right. Then they'll practice. They'll, basically, it creates a hinge. Then they'll tilt the pit guard up and drop it and let it fall. And they'll do that three or four or five, six times until it lands in the same place every time. Then the final time, they pick it up, peel the back off, let it fall, and smooth it out. And it's all good. And that's fine. Uh, that, that works. Uh, what I prefer to do is, uh, with my pencil... I like to mark where I want these two points to go, this point and this point. So I mark down here on the rosette, uh, just very faintly. You won't even be able to see it in camera. I've already marked it. Very faintly, I'll mark those two points. And uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll peel the back off. I can go ahead and kind of, we'll go ahead and lock and load and rock and roll. I'll come all the way back with it to where I can still hold on to the pit, the, the pit guard on this side, but I want enough exposed where I can work with my, my two points up here, this point and this point. And so I will very carefully get those two points in the spots that they go. About like so is where we determined we wanted this one. Then I go around the, that rosette ring where those points are and I'll press down. Starting there, using that as my base, just very lightly, start working my way to the outside edge. And then whenever I got enough down, I just pull that out from under it. And we have a pretty new pit guard installed. Then I'll take my clean dry cloth and work it down pretty good. That kind of ensures we get any air bubbles or anything out that's in that adhesive backing. And that's it, folks. Doesn't that look good? Now we turned a, uh, a good-looking guitar into a great-looking one. So anyway, I hope that... Uh, shed some light on it. Like I said, there's a lot more than one ways to skin a cat, but that's one way anyway. So thanks for watching and until next time. And uh, if you have any questions, give us a shout. Thanks a bunch.